first we had viewed a whole bunch of other apartments around the area, but they were mostly like these weird one bedrooms that were stuck in basements or the windows were about this far away from the next building and it was just all these very gloomy places. And so what sold me on this apartment when we first moved here was as soon as I stepped in the door, there were these huge windows everywhere. And because we were up on the fourth floor, it was just facing all these trees everywhere. It was like a big fun jungle house. I was pretty paranoid about this apartment and about the area. It's kind of a little bit sketchy and I'm more used to a suburban type setting. So we were trying to sleep one night and I thought that I could hear maybe like a small child, like maybe about 80 pounds running around on the roof. And I got really frightened that <laughs> some kind of midget burglar was coming or something. The first times we noticed something was kind of definitely wrong about the place is we came home one day and our pet tortoise was over near the windowsill and there was just a squirrel sitting there barking at the poor tortoise. I mean, why, why would you yell at a, a little tortoise? It's... And there's nothing that she can do about it. She's just trapped in that cage. Yeah. I, was so, I felt so bad for her. So we started getting woken up at night by these terrible noises that the squirrels would be making. They'd be fighting with each other or Sometimes I would hear them chewing on the windowsills and when I was trying to sleep and it would wake me up. One morning I looked out at the brick that's right outside of our window and there was like a little gnawed off section and it was just, oh, I can't believe they can even do that. And then we'd hear them more often rolling around on the roof, these horrible furry sounds. I started thinking that they were actually, the sounds were actually getting closer and there were these scratching sounds and all these other brushing fur noises that are really strangely revolting. I couldn't sleep. Now it was at least thinking, uh, there's no way that they're actually burrowing in. It just sounds like that they're still on the roof. But then Andy pointed out that there was actually a little hole in the ceiling. You could see the little hole in the ceiling getting larger and pulsing. And every now and then you could even see a little tiny squirrel claw like stick through it as it was clawing through this this area that was hanging right over our bed. Yeah, right over me. Yeah, and so we actually, we decided to build this little uh, sling to hold a lot of these goofy stuffed animals and stuff we have, but it was also partially implemented as an extra fail-safe device in case the squirrel did burrow all the way through in the middle of the night and wouldn't land directly on top of where Kitty was sleeping in her bed. I used to kind of like squirrels, but then it just, it just got to me so much, I lost so much sleep over hearing this scratching noise directly near my face. I used to like squirrels too, but uh, I no longer have any sentimental feelings towards them. We're trying to think of ways, the best ways to get rid of them. We were kind of worried about just poisoning them because if somehow they died while they were in our roof, maybe they would rot and then it would just be an even worse mess. We thought about using mouse traps, but eventually I decided I was just gonna have to get my BB gun out. One time I noticed the squirrel just sitting right on our windowsill gnawing away and I decided, you know, this is it, I'm going to take care of these. So I grabbed my BB gun and I opened up the windowsill. The squirrel went running off to the side and I stuck my head out to check out where they were. As soon as I had my head sitting outside the window, I noticed there was no longer just one squirrel. There was three of these squirrels just looking at me, just kind of twitching. And one of them got this look in his eye and just started charging right at my face. So I pulled my head back in the window just in time to see the squirrel go flying across the window frame where my head used to be. It was, it was terrifying. They're vicious animals, yeah. The next time I went, I decided, you know, I was gonna be prepared this time. So again, I saw another squirrel sitting there and I opened up the window slowly and I, I put the gun out first. The squirrel moved to about maybe three feet away from me and I'm just sitting there with the gun, he's looking at me, and then POW! I hit him right in his side, but he doesn't even do anything. He's just kind of just kind of looking at me and just squinting, and he's kind of angry, and he walks off slowly, and then just leaps off the side of the building into this tree that's like 20 feet below. They mostly bother us in our bedroom very early at like 4 or 5 in the morning. But this last time, the squirrels decided to start torturing us just like they did our poor pet tortoise. And they began clawing on the glass and barking at us just during the middle of the day. I walk up and the other squirrel runs away, but this one fat one just sits there. And so me and him are just kind of having an eye to eye through the window. And I slowly reach for my BB gun. As, as I begin to open the window up, 
he's still just sitting there. He's not frightened at all. And I just have the BB gun pointed right at him. I actually had the muzzle of the gun directly against his fur. He starts crawling in the window into my actual room. And then he does this backwards movement like he's getting ready to pounce. I decided it was then and there that I had to pull the trigger. I released the BB and it was like an action movie. He just went flying directly off about four feet in the open air outside the window and then just dropped like Wiley e. Coyote. I stuck my head out and I saw him hit the ground, which was, I mean, it was kind of sad looking, but he smacked right on the sidewalk below. I figured that'd be the end, but he just kind of sat there and he looked up at me and let off a couple more squirrel barks and just ran right off. like. You know, it was no big deal. I had so many sleeping problems with these squirrels. I, I can't sleep through that, so I started uh, wearing earplugs during the night, but Andy didn't seem to really like them as much as I did. Yeah, my ear would fill up with fluid throughout the course of the night. And Gross. Yeah. So we called the landlord after a while, and we actually called them many times, and Andy left them voicemails yeah. of the sound of the squirrels. Yeah, I would call up at 3 in the morning and hold the phone up to our ever-enlarging hole and let the horrible scratching noise fill up their answering machine. Yeah, so they did finally respond and a couple days later we noticed that some crew men were showing up and cutting down all these trees around our apartment, which, I mean, it ended up being an effective measure. Like, the fewer trees, the fewer squirrels that can actually jump over to our building, but I didn't mean to <laughs> ruin the neighborhood's environment or anything. Yeah. There's it turned still our trees. Whole tree palace into a kind of sadder place. There are still trees. Now we just have a much clearer view of the strip mall next door.